So where I am now is at the refugee centre in Tripoli in Lebanon. This is run by the UNHCR. Um, there are just over a million refugees from Syria here in Lebanon. And here in Tripoli is one of the centres that they've set up around the country. Um, at the height of this crisis, this centre will have been absolutely packed with people. But now the Syrian, uh, the Lebanese government has stopped new registrations uh, for uh, refugee status. So all the people who are coming here today are coming uh, to uh, follow up on previous appointments for resettlement programs, for housing, for all the kinds of benefits that they need to survive. And I'm now walking through, so what happens is you walk, I don't know if you can see, but behind me there, you walk in the main entrance, you come down, you will then give your paperwork over. If I can turn the camera around, you'll give your paperwork over to uh, this first gentleman here. And then uh, you go down and you have to speak again to another official who can then set your appointment. Um, being a refugee, it seems, is just about filing a lot of paperwork. And now the women and children uh, queue over here. Now, I think the thing to tell you is, the thing that really hits you when you're here is just the number of children. There are children absolutely everywhere, all over, uh, all over the place. When we were in the camp uh, yesterday, the informal settlement yesterday, and when we were, and now here, just children, uh, more, in fact, probably more children than there are adults. Uh, and that's the thing that really hits you. And whilst the Syrian, or whilst the Lebanese government doesn't allow uh, registration of more refugees, the population, the already existing 1.1 million who are here, that population is going to go up because these people are having more and more children. Now, we're also here uh, with Mika, the, uh, the singer. He's become a UNHCR uh, supporter, and he's here to try to better understand the situation faced by refugees. He himself was, as a one-year-old, uh, a refugee of sorts. He had to leave Lebanon during the Civil War and make it to Europe, so he knows what it's like to not belong. If I just turn the camera around, you can see here he is having his... Uh, a briefing with, with a refugee here who's explaining what it's like, um, what it's like in his case, uh, being disabled and having to go through the torment of refugee applications and asylum. So these blue chairs here will have been absolutely chocker at the beginning of this crisis. It's not as busy as it once was, but still the UNHCR has uh, a rather large job ahead of it. Um, in continuing to support these people because the Lebanese government um, doesn't allow formalized building of camps. Um, uh, you can't build a camp, uh, the UNHCR can't build the camps that they're able to build in places like uh, Turkey uh, uh, and also Jordan. Here, people have to make do really with very little um, self-built tents uh, and, and the like and un unfinished buildings and that's one of those buildings we're going to be going to visit a little later today, uh, along with Mika, who you can see behind me, um, here in the north of Lebanon.